Good morning. This is Pastor Mark Driscoll from Oakdale Free Methodist Church here in Jackson, Kentucky. It's uh, good to be here with you this morning. Glad that you've chosen to be here. Glad you made it. Hey, it's Friday and the weekend is coming and I hope that you had a good week. Glad you made it through, but now we're heading for the weekend and I hope that you have, I hope you're ready for a good weekend. And I hope you give yourself some rest, let yourself have a little bit of a break, if, if, it's, any, if it's possible at all. And, uh, but let's, let's, do some, uh, let's spend some time in the Word of God today. And uh, first, let's begin to pray and just seek the Lord this morning. Father, it's good to be here with you. It's good to be in your presence, Lord. Father, as we come to you right now, we uh, invite you, Lord, to remind us that you're with us right now. Thank you, God, for your living presence. I pray in this moment that you would, you would just remind us that you're here. Lord, thanks for your word and for the truth of it. Thank you, Lord, that your word is living and active and that your word reads us. We don't just read it. So, Lord, you, you discern our thoughts and our, our feelings, our intentions of the heart, and you discern that in your word and as we reflect and as we listen and sit with your word. So, Lord, as we look at Ephesians chapter 5 would you read us would you show us what's in our heart and show us what's in your heart uh, the scripture becomes a meeting place um, it's not just a thing to read about it's a place to meet so Lord may we meet with you right now in Jesus name Amen you know one of the things that uh, that I love about the Bible um, is that, you know, Ephesians 4.12 says that the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and is able to discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. And I really like that because what that tells me is that when I'm opening the Scripture, um, there's, there's different levels you can read the Bible on. The first level is for information. I just look at it and what happened? What does it say? Okay, I have information now. Great. The next level, I think, goes down to um, uh, beliefs. Okay, what do I believe about it? All right, I read that. Do I believe it's true? Okay, I believe it's true. I might have some intellectual problems with some things. I don't know, but it's true. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Maybe I accept it. Um, and then it gets down into values. Okay, what do you value? Because of what I've read here, there's some things that become important to me. And so that's another level. And see, a lot of people get to that level, right? But there's yet another level, and, and, uh, um, and that, that's the level of engagement. That's beyond just getting packs and information, and even, even beyond behavior, even beyond... Um, well, I guess another level would be behavior. I, I think about, okay, how am I going to behave in light of this, right? That's a, that's a good place to get. A lot of people never get there. They, they get the information, they get beliefs, they get values, but they never get into behavior. And so that's the next level is going down to, okay, what am I going to do about it? And I hope you're there. I hope because the Bible says itself, don't be just hearers of the word who deceives themselves. Be doers of the word. You know, what's the point filling your head with information if you're not going to do something about it? But there's a yet another level. And that's what Ephesians, I mean, Hebrews 4.12 is. I'm not going to preach on that. I just want to say this at the beginning. Hebrews 4.12 is about, look, um, I've got to engage it and let the Bible read me. I let God expose my heart. As I read these words, I, I don't just say, oh, I ought to be this. I ought to do that. I begin to say, okay, but what am I really? And, and what does this word show me about what's in my heart? When I read uh, forgive one another, do I allow myself to think about who am I having trouble forgiving? 
And, and what is it about forgiveness that's difficult for me? You see, what I'm doing is I'm allowing it to read me, and then I begin to bring that to God. And what happens is the Bible becomes a meeting place. It's not just where I get information. It's now a place where I actually meet God. And so I let him engage me, and I, I begin to say, you know, God, I'm going to let this word speak to me, right? I want you to do that as we look at it. We're, we're moving in. We're in Ephesians chapter 5, and uh, new chapter uh, getting close to the end of the book of Ephesians. I'm loving this study. I hope you are. Um, Ephesians will really engage you if you'll let it. It'll, it'll, it'll get to you and begin to really shape you because the Word of God is living and active. God wants to change you by His Word. Uh, Jesus said, if you you know, you know my Word, and, and it'll set you free, right? And so, it, is His Word setting you free, or is it just information? So let, let's take it down there to the next level. Say, Lord, I want you to search me as I look at this. I've searched your word. Now, now, Lord, let your word search me. See, then it, then it starts changing. Things get uncomfortable. They get Sometimes they get awkward. But th it can be transformative. Um, we're in Ephesians chapter 5. And in chapter 5 of Ephesians, Paul is taking his call to live in a manner worthy, you know, Ephesians 4.1, live in a manner worthy of the gospel, of the calling to which you've been called. And then he talks about all these different things. Then we get into Ephesians 5, and he goes a little deeper. He says, okay, now let, let's take this down to the next level. And, and so let's take our faith to the next level. What does it really mean to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which we've been called? And all the things we read about in chapter 4, how does that look? In, in real life and so how do we do it so Paul kind of takes it down down to the next place so I want you to dive in with me we're just going to look at Ephesians 5 1 and 2 today because it's the it's like the heading for the rest of what he's going to say for the rest of the chapter actually the rest of the book but anyway um, five, chapter 5 1 and 2 he says something really important here's what he says therefore you know what that therefore is there for because of what he just said in chapter 4. Go back and read it sometime. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. That's a, that's a beautiful statement. Uh, but, it, but it starts off in verse 1. He says, be imitators of God as beloved children. Now, the, the title of my message today and the, and the point of my message today is uh, imitators and imitations. Um, you know, be the imitator. Be the imitator. You know, there's, there's a really a difference. And I, and I started reflecting on this this morning as I was looking over this. There's a real difference between an imitation and an imitator, isn't there? I mean, you go to the grocery store and you can buy imitation anything. You know, my initial... Um, plan to preach this message. I was going to go in my cabinet, in my pantry, and find something imitation and hold it up for you and say, see, this is imitation. But uh, I, I discovered that I couldn't find anything fake. You know why? Because my wonderful wife doesn't buy anything fake. She there ain't nothing imitation about her. There's nothing fake about her. It's one of the reasons I love her so much. But I couldn't find a fake food product in my cabinet anywhere. Now, it may have just been a bad week, but I really don't think we have anything like that. Imitation, for example, imitation lemonade. There ain't no lemonade in there. It's a bunch of chemicals and colorings and stuff to make you think you're drinking lemonade, right? Imitation chocolate. There ain't no chocolate in there, right? And so there's all this kind of stuff. And, and so, but, but what it is, is it, it, it's been made, an imitation is, is made to look, taste, feel, and act like something. But the reality of it is not really there at all. It's just an imitation. And he said, "Walk in, uh, be imitators of God as beloved children. And I love that image because children do both. I mean, you can, when we were children, we did both. It, it's, it's a beautiful part of being a kid. You know, uh, children are sometimes the imitation. You know, I used to, I used to be Superman. I, I'd put on, I'd get a towel out of the bathroom. My mom always got mad at me, but I did it. I'd get a towel out of the bathroom, I'd get little clothes pins, and I'd, and I'd put them on my shirt so that I have a cape on the back. And then I'd run around. Sometimes I was Batman, sometimes I was Superman, and all this kind of stuff. I'd jump off bed and bump my head on something, you know, because I was trying to be the invitation of something. 
but it was something I had no intention of actually becoming, right? I was just pretending to be something, but I wasn't really intending to be that. Now, that's an important distinction that we're going to make here. An imitation is, is, is not a reflect. It's just a pretense. It's the outward appearance of something real, but on the inside, it's actually not that at all. And, and little children, beloved children, do imitation stuff all the time. They, they pretend they're a knight in shining armor fighting a dragon. But in reality, they would not want to be that. I mean, they're really not trying to. They're just pretending to be that at the moment, right? And that's kind of cool. It's fun, you know. But you know what? Kids are also imitators. That's right. Your kids are trying to be like you. Your kids will imitate things about you that they really want to become someday. You know, your, your child comes out and joins you working in the, in the, in the yard or something like that. And, and uh, you know, I remember one time my, my, my son, my oldest son, came out. I was working on something in the backyard, and I had my hammer and nails. And, and he said, he came out, and he had this real concern. And, Dad, what you doing? And I told him what I was doing. And he said, I can help. And he was really irate. I can help. You know, he, he wanted to be in it, right? And so I gave him a little hammer, and we talked about how to hit the nail. And, and uh, you know, it was kind of fun. And, you know, those kind of things are great. And, uh, you know, uh, your kids want to be like you, and so they'll try to do the stuff. But they really want to be that. See, there's this desire inside that when I grow up, I want to be like you. You see, that's imitation. That's, that is the actual practicing of something in order to become that at some point imitation imitator i'm sorry i'm getting my words confused the imitation is just the pretense the imitator is the one who is becoming something that's really important jesus had something to say about the imitations in in jerusalem he talked to the pharisees and he said you guys you you clean the outside of the cup but inside you're full of garbage because they didn't have any desire to actually become men of God. They just wanted to appear to be men of God. That's why he said when they pray, they love to stand up and, and say the prayers and sound like righteous people, but they had no intention of actually changing their hearts so they really did love God the way they were pretending to. He said they fast, and, and they're not going to be heard for their fasting. They disfigure their faces, and they, they, they cry and look like they're fasting so that they will appear to be righteous. But God ain't going to answer that. He says, look, look, when you fast, he told us, when you fast, do the real thing. Go after it. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. They wanted to be imitators of their master, their teacher. They wanted to be like him, right? And even though they didn't always get it, see, they didn't always get things right, but their heart was in the right place because they wanted to be like Jesus. Peter, he stumbled all over himself, but he was trying his best to imitate Jesus. He wanted to be like the one he loved. You see, that's what I love about children. They, they are imitations sometimes. They just want to pretend, and that's cool. But let them do it. And, but then kids also really want to be like the ones they love. And they want to become that. So when the kids get older and as they, you know, they get into their older years, they start wanting to take more on of, I want to do what you're doing. You know, I want to have my own bank account. I want to have my own car. I want to do these things. I want to have a job. I want to do this because I want to be that adult that I've been looking up to all these years. I want to be like that. Right? And that's a beautiful thing to see, isn't it? So now, let's just take this over to what Paul is saying. He's saying, look, therefore become imitators of God as beloved children. He didn't say become imitations of God. And you see, there, there's this kind of uh, there's these two kinds of Christianity in our culture today, and, and we gotta got to hit this, okay? There's two kinds. There's the imitation Christianity. Oh, goodness, this is not going to be pleasant. This is the imitation Christianity where I, I put on all the outward trappings of Christianity, 
right? I, I know how to use the right phrases. I know how to connect with the right people. I know how to make the right pretense on the outside so that everybody thinks I'm this righteous person. I might even attend church services and I might listen to the right music and I might, and I might, uh, you know, use the right, like I said, the right phrases and things. And I, and I make sure that when I'm around certain people, I act a certain way. And when I'm around these other people, I can let my hair down, right? Because I'm just pretending in front of these people, right? I'm, I'm putting on an act. If I have to act like a Christian, there's a problem deal. There it is, guys. If you have to turn it on, if you have to say, okay, now's time for me to act like a Christian, there's something really wrong. That's imitation. That's pretense. Okay, that's not what God's looking for. It makes me think of that, those frightening words Jesus said at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. He had preached Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and he had talked about loving and forgiving and loving your enemy, praying for your enemy, going the extra mile, doing the stuff of God, really becoming a kingdom person. At the end, he said, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do many great things in your name? We healed sick people. We prophesied. We did miracles. We cast out demons. Oh, we, we put on the dog for you, Jesus. And he says, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't even know you. And see, that's going to be the judgment. The judgment is that you didn't work hard enough. The judgment is, I didn't know you. I don't, I don't even know you. You see, an imitation doesn't know Jesus. An imitation knows how to put on the act knows how to say the stuff in order to, to play the part at the right time in front of the right people. And they know when to turn it on and turn it off. It's like that old thing in the 1970s, they had this thing called the clapper. Anybody remember the clapper? You know, you could turn your light on and off just by clapping your hands. <laughs> clap on, clap off. Remember that commercial? You older people will remember this commercial. Clap on, clap off, clap on. Up off. And it was one of these cool things. I don't think it went very far. It kind of—I don't even know that anybody has one of those. But but the deal is, is there's, there's a lot of a lot of us Christians that we're clapper Christians. We've learned how to clap on and clap off. I know how to act when the preacher's around. I know how to act when I'm at the church facility. I know how to act around the right people. But then when I'm not around those people, I'm around other people. I clap off. I don't have to be a Christian anymore. You see, when I'm at church, I'm so holy and so righteous. But then on the weekend, I can party it up. I can do whatever I want to do. And, I, and when I'm in the privacy of my home, I can watch filth. I can talk filth. I can be hateful. I can do all this stuff. But when I get back to church, it's all going to change. You see, that's imitation. That, that's, the, that's, the lemon, that's the fake lemonade that has the coloring and the flavoring, but it has no lemon, right? Jesus <coughs> warned us against being imitations, uh, the, the, the outward trappings. And so we're called to be imitators because none of us are like God. None of us are sinless. None of us are perfect. We, but, but we are called to mimic Him, to imitate God. Not that we're faking it, but that we're becoming it. You see, there's a difference. I'm, if I'm becoming an imitator, it's like being an apprentice. You go in and you follow the, the craftsmen around right? And you do what they do and you learn what they learn and you become what they are. You see, that's the nature of discipleship anyway. That's what the ancient disciples did. They would follow the teacher and live the lifestyle, that, but they weren't pretending. They were actually trying to become that. I want to be that. I don't want to just fake it. I want to become it. You see the point? There's a difference. Well, Paul says, look, be imitators. Don't be an imitation. Be an imitator. Be one who follows him with the intention of becoming like him. You see the deal? And so I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus as a true disciple. I'm not just memorizing verses so I can sound good. I'm getting the word in my heart so it can change me, right? I want that word to change me. You know, there are people, listen, who memorize Bible verses and I'm glad you do. I think it, we need more of that, really. There are people who memorize Bible verses. But you know what? They don't let the Bible verses change their heart. You got what I'm saying? 
They don't like the Bible verses change their heart. It's like I can memorize love one another as I have loved you, but if I don't actually say, okay, now I'm going to take that truth and ask God to help me love people the way he does, what good is it to memorize that? What good is it to, to, to memorize, um, you know, that you should not commit adultery, and then you're out here fooling around and lusting, and you know, what is the deal with that, right? So being able to memorize something doesn't make you holy. No, it's when you get it in your spirit and say, okay, God, I want this word to change me. See, I've got to be changed. I've got to be made different. And so Paul, he tells him, verse 1, be imitators of God as beloved children. Learn from the kids. You need to learn from your kids. Man, they're imitating you all the time. And they're trying, or they're imitating, maybe there's a favorite musician, and they, they, they're music, they want to imitate that music. They're trying to become that person. They're really trying to become it. And this is, that's what an imitator does. They're, they're really wanting to be that, not just pretend and be a cheap imitation. Now, how do you do it? How do you do it? Well, over the next several days, starting on Monday, uh, Chapter 5 really talks about it. I mean, it goes, here's how you do it. Here's, here's the stuff. But verse 2 gives us kind of an introduction into that, right? And then next week we'll get into the nitty-gritty of it. But verse 2 kind of... It's the subheading for the verse 1. Verse 1 says, look, be imitators. Verse 2 says, now let me tell you how to begin. All right, look at verse 2. It says, and walk in love. Walk in love. Uh, all right, make that the determination of your life. I am going to walk in love. How? As Christ loved us and what? Gave himself up for us. A fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. That Christ shows us what walking in love looks like. He gave himself up for us. He became the servant. He became the healer. He became the forgiver. He became the friend. He became the caregiver. He became the one who, who let others go first. He became the one who, who, who cared for the weak and the oppressed and the folks on the margins and, and brought them in. And he cared. And so look, he lived a holy life, a life of holiness. He, there was no fake with him. And Jesus was the real deal, right? And he still is. But look, so how do I walk in love? I, who do I imitate? I'm so thankful that God didn't just give me a book. He gave, it's a great book. But he gave me his son. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And it's through watching him walk and following his example. You know, there's a lot of people calling themselves disciples of Jesus, but they're not following his example. They're not even reading it. They don't even know what his word says. But I'm a Christian. Yeah, I got saved 20 years ago, and I said the prayer, and the preacher told me to pray, and I got baptized. Well, that's wonderful, but are you reading the Word? You know what Jesus said about that? Jesus said, look, if you continue in my Word, then you're truly my disciples, and you'll know the truth, and truth will make free. Well, so what is the antithesis of that? What is the opposite of that, right? The opposite of that is, look, if, if you don't continue in my Word, then don't pretend to be my disciples. Ouch! Ouch! Now, we could all stand to be in the Word more. I'm not saying if you could do it more. We could all do it more. But are you in His Word at all? Are you, are you asking Him to show you what He teaches? And then are you saying, okay, how do I translate this teaching into my daily life? How do I, how do I take this, uh, this teaching about uh, loving people and how do I translate it into the way that I live my daily life? You see, now I'm, I'm becoming a disciple at that point because I'm continuing in his word. I'm taking the word and I'm letting it move me, right? Because, okay, Jesus, I want to be like Jesus. My goal as a Christian is not to become a, a Republican or a Democrat. My goal is to become like Jesus, is to become like him. And so... Uh, you know, that, that's the deal. And so that's how we go. Now, so here's the, here's the thing I want to ask you to do is, is begin to make this commitment. Say, Lord Jesus, show me in your word how you want me to live and help me to translate that in my daily life. Help me start doing it. Help me do it. How do I, how do I uh, love one another? And just read. I'll tell you what. 
look at Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That's called the Sermon on the Mount. In that section, he gives us, he just lays out what it looks like to be a Christian. I mean, he tells you what they look like. Blessed are the poor in spirit. There's the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the merciful. They shall receive mercy. Oh, you know, he just tells you all about it in those three chapters. So you could just sit down, open that Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, and read that Sermon on the Mount and just begin to say, okay, Lord, now how do I, how do I live this? Don't be like the, imitation, the, the imitations who say that that's not practical and we can't do that. They're imitations. They're, they want the appearance. They want the outer show, but they don't want the reality. Don't follow them. Don't you go after somebody who's telling you not to obey Jesus. I'm serious. There are, there's people out there saying, oh, we don't really have to obey Jesus. Well, you know what? Jesus says you do. And so, um, you know, go after him. But that's what it says, and walk in love as Christ loved us. So how did he love you? Listen, here's a good principle. Be to others what Christ has been to you. That'll do it right there. Be for other people what he has been for you. And that's, that's how we begin to imitate. How did Jesus pray? Well, then you do what he did. Look it up. Study how he prayed. How did Jesus treat people who uh, attacked him? Then you deal with that. How did he handle conflict? How did he handle hard questions? How did Jesus handle those things? And then as you, you do that, then you say, okay, I want to start trying to learn how to do that. Now, remember, all of this is only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. I, I can't decide to be a Christian and just start being one. I need to be born again. Uh, that old me has to die uh, as I repent of my sin and I begin to say, Jesus, come and save me. Save me from myself. Uh, I, I need my, my old life needs to die. Lord, I need you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. I need you to forgive me of my sin. I need you to help me change. I need you to make me new. And he'll do it. Listen, he'll do it. And so as, as you walk with that, as you move in that, then he'll begin to, he'll begin to work in your life. So listen, I want to challenge you to do it. I want to challenge you to, uh, to go after him and, 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 and do more than put on the outward show. Do more than that. Let's, let's be imitators of God. Let's be those examples of God that people can see. Not that we're perfect. They don't see perfect people. They see people who are becoming like Jesus. And go ahead and admit your weaknesses. Go ahead and admit your problems to people. Don't pretend to be perfect. Just tell them straight up, I'm not perfect. I don't get everything right. But I want you to know Jesus lives in me, and I am doing my best to follow after him because he's where my hope is, and I hope you'll come with me. And see, invite them in that way instead of looking down your nose and saying, well, why aren't you as holy as I am? You know, that's not Jesus. He never did that. So don't do that if he didn't do it. Listen, do what he did. Do what he did and, and ask him to change you. You know what it says in 1 Corinthians? It says, look, it says, We who are beholding the Lord's face are being changed into his image from one level of glory to another. You know what that means? That means the more I look at him, the more I trust in him, and the more I seek to obey him, the more I become like him. Little by little, level by little, step by step, I'm becoming more like him. Because I'm watching him, I'm looking at him, and I'm following and obeying him. Get your eyes off the pundits. Get your eyes off the media. Get your eyes off the, the, the experts and get them on Jesus and just be committed to him. Just look. Say, look, he's the only king I've got. He's the only king I need, and I'm after him. And everything else will fall into place. Listen, thank you for your time. Uh, let me pray with you, and then I'm going to let you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you. Help us, Lord, to follow after you. Help us to be imitators of God. Help us to walk in love as you did and gave yourself up for us. Now, Lord, help us to be to others what you've been to us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go in peace.